The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger around the OA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terramina's on or Enabled Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on YouTube and those watching on or Enabled Television as well. Um, this week here, of course, we're going to talk a lot. Boys basketball this week. The district just came out. Um, showed a disclaimer last week on the plot, on the pod, obviously, about the... Um, how the bracket was set up and everything. Um, and I know a lot of people are so sick and tired of the freezing rain, sleet, and um, wind components as I am. I am I am so sick and tired of it. Hoping to bring, you know, hoping to bring some sunshine back. I know there's a lot of people, particularly south of M59, that's without power right now. Um, and it did impact some games. Obviously, Ferndale North Farmington, um, was the big one there, of course. They didn't, they have, I'm not sure how the power situation over at North Farmington is right now as we speak, but I, I mean, like, I haven't looked at the outage map or anything like that yet. Um, and, and the freezing rain, obviously, you know, you got a lot of it right now that's outside. I mean, I can hear it right now in the studio here. Um, a lot of talk about this week, as mentioned. Um, we talked the girls' districts, of course, they start, um, we're filming this on Monday, so. They start this evening, of course, interesting matchups, obviously, with, um, you know, with when you look at, of course, Groves taking on Bloomfield Hills, I think it's probably the most interesting of the um, districts um, tonight. Um, and then we have a lot of Wednesday games, of course. The, um, obviously, we're going to be looking at, presumably, if Adams, if, presumably, if Rochester does play Stony Creek, that'll probably be the big one um, out of the docket there. Um you know, and then, of course, Friday, of course, they have the district finals. So let's break down. Of course, we talked girls last week. Um, let's talk about the boys. Um, when you and then we'll and then if we have any time left, we'll talk the girls, obviously. But um, when you look at the boys side of things, um, kind of the matchups kind of really came down to what I expected they would be. Um, basically, let's go from. District, obviously, let's go to District 2. Um, Division 2, obviously, I think this is where, um, this will be at Hazel Park, of course, District number 59. This will be where Ferndale's at and Ferndale University are at. Of course, the matchups announced. Um, the winner, of course, this district's taking on District 57. Um, um, you got Ferndale University taking on Hazel Park, and then that winner's taking on Ferndale, and then Detroit Lincoln King Academy is Detroit Old Redford. Um, when you look at this district, and I think this is probably a very interesting one because considering Detroit Old Redford's had a really good year, um, 14 and 5 right now, um, they look good. Um, but when you look at this district, people are going to say, well, what about Ferndale? I mean, the Eagles, they had things rough early. Um, yeah, they played a real murder's row of a schedule, and it's not mentioning playing the Red. Um, but they have found a way they've won. I think they've won. I mean, they've won six, five straight games. Um, and they've gaining a lot of confidence. Well, that's a good sign for coach Juan Rickman and his team. Um, and then you look at, of course, some Ferndale university, um, you know, they've been up and down this year. I mean, under coach Josh Nix, I mean, they're much more better now than they've been in the last few years. And I think that says a lot right there. Um, so looking at this district, obviously you're looking at, obviously the, um, I will be very curious to see, I mean, I know coach Ron Rickman has talked about, you know, preparing to get to Breslin, to go to Breslin, you know, they toughened the schedule up just to get to Breslin. They've been to Breslin the last two years, but lost the Grand Rapids Catholic Central course. We know how good they are. Um, but when you really look at. Ferndale's path. I think Ferndale's path this year is much more tougher because I think in the regional they're gonna have to deal with Warren Lincoln or Warren Michigan Collegiate. I mean, of course, Warren Lincoln, let's not forget. They're the ones that knocked off North Farmington earlier in the year. I mean, how they came back from 18 down, which is mind boggling, but Warren Lincoln's a team that I think could be a real dangerous team to Ferndale if they were to match up. 
I mean, more Michigan Collegiate, maybe. But I think more and more I think about it, it's more Lincoln. Maybe it's probably the most, most dangerous team. Um, but when you look at the district, obviously here, people are going to say, well, Ferndale is going to be the favorite in this district. And they're the favorite for a lot of good reasons. I mean, I think that they can at least, um, you know, compete at a high level. I mean, I think that the Eagles, you know what I mean? The way that they're playing this year, I, I think Ferndale, they've got a good chance. I mean, they got a really, really good chance to, um, make some noise. And I think they can win this district over at Hazel Park. Um, now, Ferndale University, I think it's going to, they're going to, they should get by Hazel Park. I mean, like, Hazel Park this year has really been struggling. Um, I just think that the Eagles, you know, I, I really like where they're at. I think they're better this year than they were last year. And I think that, um, I think it could really hold against Hazel Park in the pre-district game. Um, now, it's a five-team district, so obviously you're going to have, um, you know, you're going to have the, um, a versus the two seed, which means, you know, Detroit Old Redford Academy is going to play Detroit, um, Detroit Lincoln King Academy, um, which means, you know, in the alphabet, of course, you know, you have Detroit D, then Ferndale University and Hazel Park, of course, Ferndale University is the B team, and um, Hazel Park is the C team. And, of course, the winner of the B and C takes on the top seed, and that's a going to be a really really tall order for Ferndale University if they get by Ferndale if they get by Hazel Park um then they're going to play Ferndale and that's a very difficult match for them um before likely seeing I think they will see Detroit Old Redford in the district final um I think Ferndale will knock them off I really do and move on the next round but you know don't think Detroit Old Redford is going to bow down to anybody I don't think they're going to and I think it's going to be an interesting matchup, to say the least. And I think that the Eagles, um, I think for Ferndale, the chance to win this district is pretty high. I mean, you know, especially if you're talking about, you know, winning, going back to Breslin and all that, you know. If anything else, if they don't get back to Breslin, I would consider it a failed season for Ferndale. I really would. I think Division Two is much better this year than it's been in years past. I mean, last year, obviously, with Grand Rapids Catholic Central, um, you know, the West side of the state, really good. Um, Ferndale getting the final four. Um, we're following the Grand Rapids Catholic Central. So tough pass for Ferndale. Um, I think they're the favorite in the district. Um, they should get by the district. Um, if there's one team that can give them problems, I think it's Detroit Old Redford. Um, if anything, you know, if anything, they could be the ones that can get problems. I mean, I think... I think Ferndale, if they don't, they're not careful, I think they could be upset. I mean, yes, they got some very good players on that team. I mean, Kay the Foe, you got um, you got Chris Williams, you got, you know, they got others as well. I mean, they're really good players. I mean, Cameron Reed's a good player as well. I mean, so there's gonna be a lot, a lot of challenges for Ferndale, but I, they should win that district. They really should, and I think that'll be where I think they're gonna go with. Um. Let's go now to district. Let's go back into Division One now. Let's go to div to District Thirty. Um, this will be played at Gross Point North. That winner is going to be heading to Macomb, Dakota, to play um District Thirty Two. Um, the matches are interesting. You got Roseville taking on Saint Clair Shores Lakeview. That winner is taking on Gross Point South, which is going to be the top seed in that district. Then I think Gross. I think this is going to be the best match of the district. It's going to be Gross Point North against Harper Woods. Um, people are going to say, well, why this district's interesting? Because Gross Point South had a really nice year. They've had a good year. Gross Point North, middle of the pack, they do have a very good player in Adam Ariant. Um, Harper Woods, we know, has had a great year in the gold. They've on the verge of winning the division. Um, this will be very interesting between those two teams. I mean, it was inevitable that Harper Woods and Gross Point North are going to play one another. And, you know, and here we are. I mean, when you look at that matchup, I mean, either Gross Point North is going to get the two seed or Harper Woods was going to get the two seed because, you know, when you look at the alphabet, you know, it was inevitable these two teams are going to meet. Um, I think the match, if Harper Woods can shut that at a Marriott, I think they can knock off the Norsemen. 
yes, it's at home for Growth Point North. That's going to help them. But I think the key for Coach um, Tuan Porter and the Pioneers is if they can shut down um, Adam Marriott, it's a tall, t- tall task, to say the least, but I think they got a good chance here. Um, Roseville and Gro- Roseville and Sinclair Shores Lakeview is not an easy matchup. I mean, for Growth Point South, this is a tough one for them because, you know, Lakeview this year, they've won 16 games. I mean, the Huskies, they're solid. I've seen St. Clair Shores Lakeview play. I mean, they're good. I mean, they're a good team. Um, Roseville, yeah, they're 11-9 and right now. But, you know, Roseville, they've played a tough schedule. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, what the Panthers have done. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting. That game is going to be really interesting because... Whoever wins that game is going to take on Growth Point South. Growth Point South had a really nice year this year. They've they've really had a nice year where they've really turned things around. Um, I mean, they got some proven players on that team. They got some good wins, um, especially against some um, league, fo- especially against the OA, especially against teams like um like Groves, obviously, where they knocked off. Um, but they've also played some good teams as well. They played Ferndale tough. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how um, this matchup goes. If Harper Woods, you know, and then on the on the other side, obviously we talked Harper Woods. Um, if Harper Woods were to meet Growth Point South, I think this is a very interesting matchup because <laughs> Harper Woods, we know they got experience. They won a district title last year. So there's that district championship experience. But they haven't won it in Division One. You know, last year, that was in Division Two. I mean, the teams are much different in D1 compared to D2. And I think that's going to be the challenge for Tuan Porter. Is, you know, yes, you played the gold teams this year. You played bo- the bulk of your teams are in Division One. You know, you've won some games against Division One teams. I mean, but this is a little bit different compared to playing the likes of, playing the likes of Oakland County. You're going against um, Southern Macomb County, and you're going against part of Wayne County. Um, of course, Gross Point is in Macomb County. Um, the northeastern part, the southeastern part of Macomb County, and you know it's only a short drive up I-94 for Harper Woods to go up there. Um, and then you know Roseville, of course, they're they're a solid program in Macomb County. I mean, it's basically Harper Woods is basically like a early initiation of the MAC right now. I mean, that's where they're at with their district, you know, because their district is is surrounded with Macomb County schools. So this will be very interesting for Harper Woods is can the Pioneers, you know, overcome? They got to overcome a lot. Um, life in Division One, playing a good, tough Gross Point South team. If they get there in the district final, they're going to have to go through Gross Point North. So basically for Harper Woods is you got to go through Gross Point if you want to move on to the regional. And that's pretty much how it is going to be for them is can they win it? I mean, do they have a shot? Yeah, they got a shot, but it's just, they got to go through gross point and for gross points up, be careful of Lakeview because I'll tell you what, don't be surprised. Huskies give them problems. I, I think the Huskies could, um, maybe Roseville could as well. I mean, pending if you know how that district semifinal matchup is going to go. So that's my take on, District 30. Right now, the pundits will probably pick Growth Point South. Um, Harper Woods will have a say in this. Um, Lakeview's the wild card. Um, Roseville could be a wild card. Um, that game between Roseville and St. Clair Shores Lakeview would be very interesting. Um, Growth Point North and Harper Woods, that's going to be really interesting. Um, curious to see how Tuan Porter is going to handle um, guarding against Adam Marriott, um, how his game plan is going to be for that. Um, and if he they can do it. So that's something to really watch for um, in that district. Um, let's go to District 28. Um, this will be over at um this district will be at over at um Sterling Heights Stevenson. Um you got Utica Ford taking on Utica, that winner's taking on Troy, and then Sterling Heights Stevenson taking on Troy Athens. Um when I look at this district and there's a lot of storylines. I have seen all these teams compete in this district. I have, I mean, like, 
when you look at Troy, I mean, obviously with the Colts, he got Mason Parker, Carter Cosmano, Zach Pinoza. Um, John Whiteside has really stepped up with the, the injury to Darius Whiteside. I don't know what the um I don't know what the status of Darius Whiteside is going to be. Um, you know, obviously, um, with his um knee injury, obviously, um, I'm curious to see how Troy does in the postseason because you look at yes, he got Mason Parker. Mason Parker's been having a really good year for Troy. Um, Zach Pinoza, we know what he can do. We know what Carter Cosmano can do. We know what Chase Kuyper can do. I mean, Chase Kuyper's had a really nice year. I mean, stepping up. I mean, he's really stepped up, I think, for Coach Gary Frelick. I think the bench is a big concern for Gary Frelick's team. I mean, the question is going to be is, this is not a deep team. They don't have a lot of size either. Um, so that's my concern if you're Gary Frelick is, you know, yes, you got experience. That's going to help you in this district. But the problem is going to be is how's your depth going to be? Especially when a player like Chase Kuyper gets into foul trouble or like a, um, or if like a, um, John Whiteside and get into foul trouble, Carter Cosmano, Zach Pinoza, what if they get into foul trouble? I mean, that's the big question I have for Troy is can they handle it? And then you look at that district, their matchup, you got Utica Ford taking on Utica. Utica's had a really good year. I mean, they've had a really nice year. They've had some, they've had some wins on that on that docket. They've had some wins. I mean, and then you look at Utica Ford. Utica Ford's a very young team this year. Um, the Falcons, they got a very young team, but I um, but they're well coaching to coach Jeremy Denna. I mean, you know, former West Bloomfield coach. Um, this will be a very interesting matchup between Utica Ford and Utica because the last time those two teams played, um, Utica Ford um fell pretty bad to Utica. It was it wasn't even close. Um, where the um Chieftains um just destroyed the Falcons at Utica Ford. Um, don't have a score with me there, but it was pretty bad. Um, I think it was fifty five forty four was that score. I think that was the score, but I can't comment on that, you know, because if I did see the video of that game, um, I don't have it with me at this moment. Um, but if it's Utica against Troy, I think Utica can give Troy some problems. I really do. Um, obviously they got the guards to match up with. They got some size inside. Um, if Darius Whiteside comes back for that game, that changes everything. It really does. Um, so, you know, when you really look at it here, I mean, it would really help things if Darius does come back for that district. And I think he will. Um, but, you know, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how, um, that matchup were to happen if Utica got by Utica Ford again, and then they would have to play um Troy in the district semifinals, and that would be a really interesting matchup, to say the least. I mean, like, over there. That would be really interesting if those two teams played. Um, <laughs> I still think Troy has got more experience in that game if they were to play, Um, but you never know, especially Utica's rowdy student section. They are rowdy. I mean... They are a very unique bunch over there. Very unique. And then on the other side of the district, you got Sterling Heights, Stevenson taking on Troy Athens. Um, injuries have really doomed the Titans this year. I mean, you really look at Sterling Heights, Stevenson. Um, what helps them is they got home court, but they got a very good big man. I mean, they got a very good big man. Um... But I think that could pose some problems. I mean, like, if Stevenson, Sterling Heights, Stevenson, you know, they're a team that, you know, really underperformed this year. Um, but they got a bright future ahead of them. I mean, the Titans, they do have a very good future. The matchup I'm curious to see is going to be in that match against Troy Athens is going to be between um, Joseph Malalek and um, and um, Brogan Whitworth. I mean, both of them big guys in the interior. Both of them are shot blockers. Both of them can dunk. Um, Malak is 6'9". Malak's probably about 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, six, um, oh, no. Withram's about 6'8". Malak's about 6'9". Um, that's according to what I have in my notes here. Um, obviously, that matchup inside is going to be interesting. 
I think Emmanuel Robinson's the key in that game. Because if he plays well, Troy Athens plays well. If he doesn't play well, they tend to struggle. So this is an interesting matchup for Coach Dave Scott because Troy Athens, they, they've been up and down. I mean, they had a big winning streak. They control their own destiny in the blue. If they win their next two games, they're going to win the blue this year. I mean, they've had a good year, a really good year. I mean, early on they struggled, but they picked it up lately. They've really picked it up. So when I look at this matchup, you know, could they play their arch rival in the district final? It's possible, but it all depends. Everything has to work itself out. Um, Definitely to keep an eye on the matchup there between Sterling Heights, Stevenson, Troy, Athens. Um, I think that could go two different ways. Sterling Heights, Stevenson has proven they can go up and down with teams. Troy Athens has proven they can stop people. I don't trust Sterling Heights Stevenson's defense in this district. Even though they're at home, they have the court surroundings. Um, it's hard for me to trust Sterling Heights Stevenson in this district. It really is. Um, so when I look at this district, people are going to say, well, Troy's a favorite. Yes, they are because of experience. But the injury bug is a concern. The lack of depth is a concern. Um, so, but I, I have confidence in Coach Gary Frelick. I have confidence in assistant coaches Al Walker and Gary Parker. I have a lot of confidence in them. And I have a lot of confidence in Bryce Parker. If Bryce Parker figures out the rims there at Sterling Heights Stevenson, that's going to be all she wrote in that district. That'll be all she wrote. Um... So that's what I'm looking at with that Troy district um, or at Sterling Heights Stevenson. I think Troy's got a great shot to win that district. Utica would be a big problem for them. I think Troy Athens is a shot. They got to play well defensively and knock off Sterling Heights Stevenson. That's what I see right now in that district. Um, let's go now to district number 27. This will be at, um, this will be at Bloomfield Hills. This is going to be a district a lot of people have been talking about, um, obviously with the, um, obviously with everything that's been going on, this is probably going to be the toughest district, one of the toughest districts in the state of Michigan this year. Um, you got Groves taking on Seaholm. That winner's taking on the um, top seed and Catholic League champion, Birmingham Brother Rice. And then you have West Bluefield taking on Bluefield Hills. That winner's taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, who is the two seed in that district. Um, this is going to be very interesting. I mean, the, the two best games in the first round are going to be really interesting. Gross taking on Seaholm. That one's interesting because Mark Coach Mark West has had a really nice year with Groves. Um, they, I mean, both Josh's, Josh Jimson, Josh Gibson had really good sophomore years. Really good. I mean, and I think, you know, when you look at what's, Mark West has done over there at Groves. He's done a wonderful job building that program back. I'll tell you what. Groves is back to where they need to be. Um, they're a scary team. I think they're a scary team. Um, Seaholm. They started off the year 0-5. They're 10-5 and since the year's turned to 2023. That says a lot. These two teams have played earlier in the year. Um, back in January, of course, some growth won that one, I think, 40 to 25. Um, that one was really interesting because Seaholm, let's not forget, they were starting to get their things back together, obviously, and then they started going on that run where they're right in the thick of the blue race right now. Um, I think this is going to be really interesting because... Groves has played at C at Bloomby Hills this year. They played there. Um, whereas on the flip side, Seaholm is Seaholm played Bloomby Hills, but I was at Seaholm. They were crushed by Bloomby Hills. So when you look at this matchup of rivals, I think Elijah Yelder is a difference maker in this district. <laughs> Question is, can Max Kramer come back from injury? If he can come back from injury, that's another plus for um Groves. Can Chris Williams step up? 
in the interior? <laughs> That's the big question I have for Grubbs. I mean, you got Yelder there. You got Simpson and Gibson. I mean, like, both of them been playing lights out basketball. So I'm very curious to see. It's be very interesting to see how Groves responds in this match against Seahome. On the home side, playing scrappy team ball um, really has helped them in this year. They've really done well under Coach Mike DeGue. I mean, I think this will be a good game. I expect this to be a really good game. And then that winner's taking on Birmingham Borough the Rice. We know how the Warriors have done this year. Winning the Catholic League title. I think that's the first time I'm thinking about almost 30 years, I think. Um, but Ricky Palmer has done a really nice job of that program. He's done a really nice job of that program. Um, so that'll be a really interesting matchup. Uh, whoever wins that district, that battle of Birmingham matchup, to take on Birmingham Brother Rice in the next round. Really interesting. On the other side, you got West Bloomfield taking on Bloomfield Hills. A rematch of a 46-39 win for West Bloomfield at Bloomfield Hills. West Bloomfield controls their own destiny in the white right now. Um, The Lakers have a guard named Donnie Watts who's really been playing good basketball lately. You got Mitchell Say in the interior. You have Torrey James who can shoot you threes. You have, they've got some players. They got some key players. And Arnett Jordan's done a really nice job of that team. Boopy Hills is Noah Adamsich. Yes, they also have CJ Jackson, Drew Wilson, Amat Taylor. Um, You know, this is a very, very good lineup that they have. Now, when you look at Bloom, this matchup here, it's going to come down to is can West Bloomfield defensively shut down Noah Adamsich? That's the big question. Because Adamsich has put 30 or more points almost every game he's played this year. That tells you something right there. Really does. When you look at, and then the winner of that district is taking on Orchard, the winner of that game is taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Obviously, you talk about Trey McKinney. That's where you start. But with the distractions that this team has been going through, obviously, when you, you look at Orchard Lake St. Mary's record, they're saying they're 8-10, and 10, you know, say, well, this is not the same team maybe used to be. You know, let's not forget, this team's been really decimated with, um, obviously, the transfer the transfer issue that's been going on. Uh, I know there's been a lot. A lot has been reading about it in the uh, Oakland Press, obviously, with Coach with them. With them with Scott Bernstein taking um with Scott Bernstein writing a couple of articles about the um trend, about the um situation that's going on over at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um of course that case is being, you know, involving two um two transfers who came into Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, and another and a um, another one who came in from another con I mean who came in as well. Um when you look at What's been going on is, you know, the try. I mean, like, I know that this court case has really been distract. I mean, it has to be distracting for Orchard Lake St. Mary's for Coach Todd Colbert. I mean, like, in the, this year, you know, you look at okay, you know, the MHA really, you know, when you look at the case, um, you know, they've gotten they had to deal with the issue with the Catholic League, then they've had to deal with the MHA. I mean, like, you know, it's been it's been crazy. And I know it's been a big distraction for Coach Ty Culver. It has to be. And you look at that district, people are going to say, well, does the Orchard Lake St. Mary's look vulnerable? Yes, they do. Here's why. Because you look at that team, even without those two, you know, you have Sherrod Barnes there as well. Um, to go along with Trey McKinney, you look at that, that team, I don't know if two guys can carry that team. Doesn't matter how good you are. I mean, two doesn't beat five. That's really what it is. I think Orchard Lake St. Mary's is vulnerable. I really do. I mean, so I think whoever wins that district, whoever wins that side of the bracket between West Bloomby and Bloomby Hills, I think he's got a great shot. You know, if it is, um, you know, obviously you look at what Noah Adamsich can do in that district for Bloomby Hills. And on the flip side, you got Donnie James there. You got Mitchell Say there. Um, Tory James there. I mean, like, 
They got players on the, on West Bloomfield. So, that side of the bracket, I can't trust St. Mary's in that district. And I don't think anybody should. Yes, I don't know. Yes, they've had been ranked really high all season long. I think a lot of that's Trey McKinney. But when you look at them as a team, you know, you think about it. If, if you get McKinney into foul trouble, they're in trouble. That's really what it is. You know, McKinney can do so much. Sherrod Barnes can do so much. So when I look at that district, when I look at this district here, I think Birmingham and Brother Rice has a great chance to win this district. I think they're going to win this district. But you can never underestimate West Bloomfield. You can never underestimate Bloomfield Hills. I mean, people are going to say, well, what about Orchard Lake, St. Mary's? I, I can't trust them. I really can't. And then, yes, you know, Groves and Seaholm, that winner's taking on Birmingham and Brother Rice. But I just think Coach Ricky Palmer's team's on a mission. I just think they are. I mean, the way they're playing right now, they're, I think the Warriors, they're a scary team. They are going to be, they're a scary, scary team right now. They really are. Um, Let's go now to District 26. This will be at North Farmington. Um, In this one here, you got, um, you got, you got Salford Arson Tech taking on Lavonia Stevenson. Um, that winner is taking on North Farmington. And then Farmington versus Detroit Henry Ford. Um, and you look at this district, people are going to say, well, this is basically like an exhibition for North Farmington. I think it might be. Because I don't know if anybody can touch him in that district. Because you look at the matchup between Salford Arson Tech and Lavoni Stevenson, that's basically like a prelude for North Farmington. You look at the Raiders this year, they're good. They're really good. I mean, obviously, when you look at Ryan Hurst, you look at Tyler Spratt, Landon Williams. Um, I mean, you got um, you got Prince Jackson there. Um, you know, when you look at this team, I mean, North Farmington, they're loaded. They're ready for a state title run. They're one of the top teams in the state of Michigan right now. The way that Coach Todd negotiates has got that team playing. I mean, you look at, and their matchups here, Livonia Stevenson's had a good year. I mean, they've won 12 games, middle of the pack team in the um, Kensington Lakes, um, in the Kensington Lakes um, at the Kennedy Association. Um, Southfield Arts and Tech has been just really disappointing this year under Coach Terrence Porter. Um, former um, Farmington coach, obviously. Um, but I've been really disappointed with Southfield how they performed this year. I mean... This is a team that's got, they've got some, um, I mean, like, they've been in some tight games, obviously, especially against Harper Woods. But when you look at the division that they're in um, with the gold, obviously, I mean, like, um, I don't know if it's going to get them prepared for what they're going to see if they get by Lavoni Stevenson. And whoever wins that game is going to get North Farmington the next round. That's a difficult matchup, to say the least, for these. That's going to be really difficult. So, tough draw for Southfield. Tough draw for um, Livonia Stevenson. Um, on the other side, you have Farmington against Detroit Henry Ford. This one will be interesting. Because, let's not forget, Detroit Henry Ford, they beat, I mean, they beat Bloomby Hills. I mean, they beat Bloomby Hills um, over at the Motor City Round Ball. Um, basically going to a 2-3 zone. Do I see that happening again? Probably not. But they've got some players. Detroit Henry Ford does have some players. Um, they're a solid team. They're well coached, too. Um, and then on the flip side, there's Farmington. Farmington, yes, you, they look at the records, not great, not good. But this team's better than what the record indicates. They have a star player in the making of freshman Greg Grace. Grace at 40 against Detroit Public Safety Academy um, just on Saturday over Adam Warren Lincoln. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. I mean, Grace is going to be the one that's going to have to carry Farmington in this district. They got others, too, that could do it, but more Grace. Grace is going to be the one that He's going to be the one that's going to be showcased for Farmington 
going forward for Coach Derek McDowell. If, you know, who knows what's going to happen here. Can Farmington get to the district final? I think they can. They got a heck They got a heck of a matchup against Detroit. I'm Henry Ford. It's a tough matchup. But if but if your coach, um, if your coach, I think your coach Trey Flowers, um, you're going to have to really prepare how to stop Greg Grace. That's going to be a tough, tough matchup. It is a very difficult match, to say the least. I mean, like, obviously, you know, with what Detroit Henry Ford has done, you know, I think when you look at what they've done, I mean, I think, you know, when you look at what Detroit Henry Ford's done, I mean, they, they've done some good things. Actually, the coach is Ken Flowers. I apologize um, to people, good folks over at Detroit Henry Ford. Coach Ken Flowers. Um, this is going to be interesting because, like I said, whoever wins that Farmington Detroit Henry Ford game will get to the district final, likely taking on North Farmington. And it's a terrible matchup for them because North Farmington, they played Farmington earlier in the year and it was not even close at all. It was a, it was a bloodbath over at North Farmington. When those two teams played. Farmington just literally didn't have a chance in that game. Literally. I mean. And. I'm not sure if Farmington were to play North Farmington. In the district final. How that would be. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens there in that matchup. It really will be. Um, if it, North Farmington were to play Detroit Henry Ford in the district final. That's an interesting more matchup. I mean. Detroit Henry Ford is more athletic. But I just think North Farmington's experience could be a big factor in that game. It'll be interesting to see. It'll be really interesting to see how that game goes. It would be really interesting. Um, but like I said, that district, I just don't see anybody touching North Farmington that district. I just don't see it. Okay, now let's go to district number um 25. This will be at Berkeley. Um, You have... You have Berkeley taking on Detroit Bumper. That t that winner's taking on um Detroit UAD Jesuit, and then you have Royal Oak versus Detroit Renaissance, which that's going to be a really interesting game. We'll talk that one in a minute. Um, that winner's taking on Oak Park. Um, when you look at this district, let's go look in the top side first. You got Berkeley taking on Detroit Mumford. Berkeley should win this game. Home court. You have a proven experience player to me, Rukovich. Um, you know, you've been you've been up and down all year long. I mean, and you're still in the race in the blue. I mean, for Coach Joe Sermo, um, this is going to be an interesting game. It'll be really interesting to see how this game goes. Because you look at Berkeley, you know, I mean, they've had some games where they look really good, and there's some games that looked really bad. Um, they just had a big win against Royal Oak the other night, um, which is big for their confidence, especially when you knock off their arch rival. Um, you know, we knock off a big rival like Royal Oak. I mean, that is a big deal um, on your home floor. I mean, they also went in the Royal Oak and won that game over there as well. Um, so the likelihood of Berkeley taking on UD Jesuits is really high in the district semifinals. And it's a tough matchup for Coach George Thermo. You look at what the um, Cubs have. Sonny Wilson. They got others as well. I mean, you know, Sonny Wilson going to Toledo next year. Um, I'll tell you what. I mean, like, Sonny Wilson's like a modified version of Cassius Winston. That's how much praise I give Sonny Wilson. And when you look at that district, obviously Oak Park, you know, Oak Park, who's on the other side of the bracket, they haven't beaten UD Jesuit in three years. There's a lot of pressure on Oak Park this year. Really is. Considering what's happened to them the last couple years against the Cubs. They've had Oak Park's number. It is clear today. But for Oak Park, they got to be careful on the other side of the bracket. And I think this is going to be the game I'm going to be talking a little bit more about when you look forward to this. Is the battle between Royal Oak and Detroit Renaissance. Detroit Renaissance, we know, is a heck of a team. 
they got a good team. They had a tough loss to Ferdinand the other day, 88-81 in the um, 3-1-3 Classic at Warren Lincoln. Really tough loss. Um, they got some size. They got some good shooters. When you look at Royal Oak, Royal Oak, yeah, they played in the gold. They played in the blue this year. They got shooters. You look at players like Camden Clark. You look at Dylan Hoffman. You look at Nick Hoffman. You look at um, Rashad Wilson. Um, you're gonna Royal Oak's gonna have to play really well. They're gonna have to execute offensively. You know, they've got to be hitting on all cylinders from three point line because Royal Oak's strength is shooting the three ball. They shoot it very well. But there's games where they struggle. When they got off that start early, that 5-0 and start, they were, they were beating people, literally. But then lately when they got into 2023, haven't been the same team since. I mean, I think that the competition's gotten to, the, to them. I think that, you know, when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, they're going to have to step up. Because they lost with some good teams already. I mean, you look at teams like, you know, you look at teams like Lake Orion that they've lost to. They've lost to, they've lost to Oxford. They've lost to Berkeley twice. They've lost to, you know, they've, I mean, like they've lost to Holly. I mean, Holly won a Flint Metro League title. Congratulations, Coach Steve Dayhart, by the way, for winning a Flint Metro League title. Um, for knocking off Fenton, by the way. Um, shout out to the Holly Bronchos and Coach Steve Dehart. Um, for winning the Flip Metro League title. Um, I think they have a good chance to win. I think they have a good chance in their district this year. So that's my hot take. Congratulations, Steve Dayhart and Holly. Um, but back to Royal Oak. Um, I think that, you know, when you look at this match, Royal Oak's got to shoot, be efficient shooting wise, got to defend, tall order against the Detroit Renaissance. Um, you win that game, you get to deal with Oak Park. That's another tough game. Oak Park sophomores have been really good. Um, really efficient. Um, you know, this year, just not the, um, you know, they're not like the, um, but this, 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 they're a good team. They're still, they're a very good team. But, you know, I was a little shocked that they lost the other night. Um, you know, just surprised how they lost. Just mind boggle how they lost that game. Um, but Oak Park earned the number two seed. Um, Good spot in their district. If they get Detroit Renaissance, it's a tough matchup, but it, I think it's a winnable game for them. Um, if it's Royal Oak, it's definitely winnable. So Royal Oak's got it tough. Um, so does Detroit Renaissance. Um, I'm going to go through Oak Park. And then that winner is likely going to probably see UAD Jesuit in the district final. Um, if it's Oak Park, obviously, you know, they got a lot to prove against them. Um, but if somehow Berkeley does upset them, which... They could, but it's not likely. Um, but we'll see. I mean, but I think that district right now looks like it's UD Jesuits district to lose. But keep an eye on Oak Park. Keep an eye on um UD uh, on um keep an eye on Detroit Renaissance. Keep an eye on you know. So those are the games to really watch for in that district over at Berkeley. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, now let's go to district number. Four. This will be at Grand Blank. Um, you got Oxford taking on Lapeer. That winner's taking on Grand Blank. Um, and then you have Flint Cursory taking on Davison. Davison's got a really good draw here. Um, I expect Davison to get the district final. Um, Oxford, how do you explain it? I mean, they should get by Lapeer. Lapeer has really struggled this year. Um, I think they're winless right now when you look at their... Um, with what they've been going on right now. But the fact you're staring at Grand Blank, top seed in their district, home court. I mean, like, if you're Coach Steve Laidlaw, you're numb looking at this. You look at what Grand Blank's done this year. Plays a tough schedule. They've got one of the best players in the state, RJ Taylor. You got Taj Boyd. You got Bryce O'Mara. I mean, this is a very, very scary Grand Blank team. And they've done a really good job. You know, with the ever since they made the coaching change, you know, in the transition, 
I think the transition has been really smooth for them. I mean, with Tory Jackson taking over there at Grand Blank, I mean, like, the transition there has been really good. I mean, RJ Taylor's been playing good basketball. Taj Boyd, I think, has been playing much better than he did last year. And that's scary, considering that that same team went to the district final last year. Went to state final last year. So that's scary. That's a scary thought when you look at Graham Blank. And if you're Oxford, you look at players like Jake Champagne, Dom Cassisi. You look at old Katie Brothers. You look at Dylan Stone. I mean, like, Kyle, Kyle Demetria. I mean, it's going to be tough. For this, it's gonna be tough for Oxford in this district against Graham Link. It's gonna be really tough. But I don't know if they have a chance in that game against them. I don't know in the district semifinals. They should get by Lapeer, though. But Graham Blank's gonna be a tall order. It'll really be a tall order for the Cats. So we'll see how that district goes. We'll see what happens there. Um, let's go down to District 6. This will be at Clarkston. Um, you got this is a very interesting matchup here in the district here. You got um you got um Avondale taking on um Avondale's gonna be taking on um Waterford Mott. Um and then on the other side of the bracket, you got Pontiac taking on Waterford Kettering, and that team's taking on Clarkston. Um when you look at we're going to look at Avondale first because this has been a team that's really been through a lot this year. Had a coaching change midseason. Um, been really been up and down this year. And, you know, it's 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 a tall order for Avondale going up against a team like Waterford Mott, who was really good, who's good this year. They're good. I mean, <laughs> the fact they're third in the Lakes Valley behind um, Milford and um, I think South Lion East is the other one that's third. That's that's um tied for them, but they control their own destiny in Lakes Valley right now. So when you look at Water Vermont, um, you know they've had some games that they look really good. There's some games that they haven't looked that good. I mean, so if you're Avondale, you're gonna have to play really well, especially Justin Sykes. Um, if he can come out and play real well in that game. I think Avondale's got a good chance. I got a chance here against Waterford Mott, but they got to play well. I mean, that's really what it is. They have to play well for them to have a chance in that game. And then on the other side, you got Pontiac taking on Waterford Kettering, and that winner's taking on Clarkson. Well, when you look at Clarkson this year, they're not the same team they they've been in years past. When you look at Clarkson just thrashing people, I mean. Yes, they got players in Desmond Stevens. They got Kavanaugh Dighton. You got Brody Cozen. Um, you got um, you know, you got um, you got Wiley there who can shoot threes, obviously. But when you look at Clarkson, this is not the same Clarkson team has been in years past. But what helps Clarkson is they got home court. They got the top seed. You know, they're gonna be fine. And then when you look at Pontiac's situation and play water for Kettering in the first round, this is an interesting matchup because these are two teams that have really struggled this year. Water for Kettering's going through a transition period under Coach Steve Emmert. Of course, Emmert, we all know what he's done at Oxford, coaching the girls' program there. He's also coached at Wald Lake Central. He's coached at Wald Lake Western. I mean, you know, he's been he's been around. He's been around the entire, around Oakland County. He's a legendary coach. I know he's been, en he's enjoyed this year, even though the record doesn't indicate it. But I'll tell you what, I mean, Waterford Kettering, they're a scary team. And especially for Pontiac. Pontiac's been up and down this year. They've had some moments they look really good. Others, not so much. So, if you're Coach Damon O'Neill, you know, this is a tough spot for you because this game looks winnable for you, but and but on the other side of it, it doesn't. So, but it's an interesting game. I think it's going to be a battle of two different styles, you know, between Kettering and Pontiac. You know, can Pontiac handle water for Kettering's trap? Trap Davis, can they handle it? That's a big question. I mean, if they can't, 
Don't be surprised if Waterford Kettering's playing Clarkston in the district semifinal. It wouldn't surprise anybody. It really wouldn't surprise anybody if that were the case. But then, of course, a lot of people have been looking at that Clarkston Waterford Mott district final. Could it happen again? Could a rematch happen there? Yes, it could. I mean, people, a lot of people have been expecting it. Talking about that matchup. Clark, I mean, like last year, Water Vermont had the number one seed. Let's remember, you know, Clarkson came in there as the number two seed. I thought Clarkson would have been, should have been the number one last year in that district, but it didn't happen. Clarkson went in there and beat Water Vermont in the district final. They did that. And, of course, the rest is history. So, when you look at this district here, it's hard to beat Clarkson at Clarkston. It is really hard to do that. Water Vermont might have a shot, but they got to get by Avondale. Avondale's a scary team because of their athleticism. They're playing with nothing to lose. So it'll be very interesting to see how that matchup goes in that district goes. So really interesting to watch here in that one. And then we have District 5. This will be over at Utica Eisenhower. You have Lake Orion taking on Rochester. That winner's taking on Rochester Adams. And then you have um, Stony Creek taking on um, Romeo. And that winner's taking on Utica Eisenhower. Um, when you look at this district, and I think this is a really interesting district because the top seed in this district's Adams. Adams hasn't had the greatest of years in the red this year. But they have some playmakers I'm really impressed with. William G., Peter Caracas have really blossomed at, at the guard spots this year. Then you have Brady Prescore in the interior. Um, Drew Brockshears played really well in the interior. Um, Brock Kawa, solid in the in solid depth player. Um, but Adams has really been impressive this year, despite, you know what I mean, the recent struggles in the red. And I think that's a credit to Coach Jared Thomas for building that program over at Adams. Big credit for them. You look at a team like Rochester Adams. Um, here's a team that's really... Adams has been a team that really has been um, just, you know... Adams has been good. Really good. I'll tell you that much right now. I mean, they're a scary group. Real scary group. And then, But the team I don't think they want to see, honestly, is Lake Orion. When you look at the Dragons, when they played them early in the year, you know, back in December, Lake Orion didn't have Nate Havrilla or DJ Morrill. Both of them were out with injuries. Havrilla was out sick. You know, in that game, you know, that was a um, that was an Adams domination. Rochester beat Adams earlier in the year, but then again, Adams didn't have Brady Pre scored. So that might make a big difference this time. And when Lake Orion played Rochester earlier in the year, you know, Lake Orion won that 50-37, but Rochester had a 25.4 quarter in that game. So, they have players. You have Grant Cogano. You have Eli Collage. You have Matt Mole. Matt Mole's had a really good year this year. His freshman year. So, it'll be really interesting there in that matchup. Then the other side, you got Stony Creek taking on Romeo. Um, Stony Creek, they've had a rough year this year. But Peyton Rumber just came back. That's going to help them. You, you put them in a lineup with Jake Fulkerson, Aiden Grosko, Trey Walker. I mean, you have, you have that lineup back. I mean, you have Jonah McKay who can help you depth-wise. You have Thomas Gosincola. He can also help you depth-wise. But with Rumber back, that's a big deal. You're taking on a Romeo team that has... Romeo's not a bad team. You look at players like Tim Kiwi. We know Kiwi's had a really good year in senior year. Aiden Tag has really improved this year. I thought, you know what I mean, when watching him on film, I mean, he looks like a completely different player than he was last year. I remember last year when Utica Eisenhower just basically pressured him like crazy. And let's not forget, Romeo beat, has beaten Yuka Eisenhower twice this year. Yuka Eisenhower's got a bit, I mean, they're a good team. You look at players like Ethan Malavak, who has really been instrumental in their, um, in their turnaround, especially in the MAC tournament, where 
they were were he was were Utica Eisenhower as a team had a heck of a MAC tournament. They knocked off Port Huron Northern, who was who was really good. They knocked off Chippewa Valley, and they knocked off Growth Point South. That says something right there. So the reason why Utica Eisenhower they got the two seed because that MAC tournament. That's really what it is. So it'll be really interesting to see how this district's going to go. Because I think any of these teams have a great chance to win this district. You know, so what I'm looking at in this district here, anybody can win this district. I mean, people are going to say, well, Adams will be the, probably the early favorite, and I, and I get that. But Eisenhower's got a great ch chance. Lake Orion's got a shot. Romeo's got a shot. Stony Creek's got a shot. Heck, Rochester's got a shot. I think all the six East teams have a shot in this district. I mean, it is a tough district, to say the least. You know, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this one goes. Because there's a lot of good teams in this district. It is not an easy district, to say the least at all. So, we'll see what happens going forward there. Um... Final thoughts, you know, we'll see what happens there uh, for the boys' side of things. Um, of course, uh, make sure you stay. I have posted a couple, I posted the district previous in the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, didn't do projections yet, um, honestly, for the district because, you know, I'll be honest with you. Heck, sometimes, you know what I mean? When I do projections and all that, usually I'm a curse. So, you know, so that's usually where, um, you know, usually. Usually, like, that's how it is. So, it is what it is. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Of course, we're hoping for better weather coming up. Um, got cheerleading districts coming up this weekend, um, which should be very interesting. I think Rochester, Stony Creek, and Adams are in that district, or in the state final for cheerleading. Um, so, we'll see what happens um, going forward there. Um, all right, man, I'm signing off here. Um, take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week. See you next weekend. God bless all. See you later.